Inside every museum is a hidden world. Now, for the first time, cameras have been allowed behind the scenes at the Victoria and Albert Museum. Here we are, at Elton John. Wonderful piece of theatrical bling. Home to more than two million wonders of art, design and performance. This gentleman has a little cloak that you can lift up and see what he's wearing underneath. But only a small part of the collection is on display. One of our showpieces designed for the Queen. Every time I see it, I notice something that I didn't spot before. Inside the stores are treasures many of us never see. Ah, oh, his eyes are open. He looks like as if he's about to grab my hand or something. And an army of experts is at work. This bit always makes me feel a bit like a plastic surgeon, stitching up the skin. Bringing masterpieces to light. It does feel like a magical world, because it feels like you've been shrunk to their size. Restoring our heritage and breathing new life into fragile marvels. It's one of three volumes by Leonardo da Vinci. To keep the past alive for all of us. The thing about the V&A is that it's a national collection. It's owned by everybody. Every day, the V&A's curators and conservators are at work on wonders large and small, trying to keep the past alive. And each close encounter is also a chance to unlock an object's secrets. When you're working with that one particular beautiful object all day, just you and the object, you become invested in it and you want to sort of investigate the history of them to try and find out what is so special about this object. Isn't that a privilege to be able to do that? But some of the treasures in the stores are in need of some serious TLC. So this is what we call Store 8, which is our main toy store at the museum. The V&A's Museum of Childhood houses Britain's biggest collection of toys from the past, including one character who hasn't aged very well at all. So, we're about to meet Pumpy the Elephant. And he's a real star of our collection. He's very well loved, as you can tell from the state of him. Pumpy is a homemade elephant stitched together from odds and ends over a hundred years ago. Before he came to the museum, he had a hard life. So he's most profoundly missing one of his ears and his trunk has seen better days. We're a bit worried about Pompey because he has got quite a lot of signs of damage. He's been very heavily played with, but also he's made from um, sort of tasty natural materials. So. He's been attacked several times by insects in the past. But that's also part of his charm. This moth-eaten elephant was the cherished toy of the Catley family. Five brothers and sisters who lived in West London in the early 1900s. We think he might have been handmade by children, but we don't know that for sure. But we're absolutely certain his clothes were made for him um, by this, uh, these five siblings who lived in Ealing. He's got all his Admiralty brass buttons all over his sailor's uniform. He's brilliant in a way because he's a kind of quintessential colonial toy for a, a middle-class family. In a sense, he's an elephant. I think he's an Indian elephant. He's only got quite small ears. Um, but he's also a sailor, and Britain was this sort of extremely important maritime power. So he's a very sort of imperial toy. Pumpy is a relic of an era when toys weren't thrown away after a few years, but were considered part of the family. This is a photo album uh, made by the children in which they photographed um, all their toys in various poses. So here's a good pumpy page. There he is on the beach. For us, the fact they took him on holiday, photographed him on the beach, that sort of thing, did paintings of them posed at home, offers a really like, genuine and very charming insight into a, a period of history, but also uh, an insight into, into how children think and feel. Now, the Welcome Collection has asked for Pompey to appear in a new exhibition, celebrating children's play. 
but in his present state, he can't travel. Pompey isn't currently on display at the Museum of Childhood because he is very vulnerable. So I'm really hoping that conservation will make him stable enough for display. Is that him? That's him in there, yeah. Oh, good. Right. Conservator Joe must try to patch him up. Poor old ear, though. Yeah. One eye, one ear. This is the main problem, his nose. I think we have to get in there and do something with that. And of course, the moths have eaten there. His nose is becoming quite, quite loose. And in fact, there's a piece of the stuffing coming out. I think we got to Pumpy just in time. He's a frail elephant. And you have to remember, he's uh, 120 years old now. Nothing that he was made of was designed to last that long. I've never seen Pumpy undressed before, so this is actually, strangely to say, quite an exciting moment for me. It's nice to learn a bit more about him. There we go, here come the trousers. Oh! He's got a tail! <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? What's the difference in colour between his head and his body? Yeah, it was a combination of light yeah. damage and fingers. And there's quite a big hole there. Yeah. It's just bigger than I thought. It's funny seeing Pumpy underneath these bright studio lights, he actually looks a lot worse. He does, doesn't he? It makes me worry a little bit more about him. <sighs> Moths. What are we going to do, eh? Mm.